Welcome everybody to this week's edition of Heart to Heart. I'm Sally Brown and I'll be your host. We're so glad that you've chosen to spend part of your day with us. Got a great show coming up. You're not gonna wanna miss one segment. And as always, grab a pen and a piece of paper because you might wanna take some notes. I'd like to thank all of our sponsors though before we get started, Midway Federal Credit Union, Domino Federal Credit Union, Darks Memorial Hospice, and Christus St. Michael. We really appreciate their faithfulness in supporting this family-friendly programming for Texarkana. If you'd like to be a part of it, give us a call. We've got several different packages. I know one you would be interested in. Sit back, relax, and we'll get started after we hear from one of our sponsors. From a few Bibles at other stores, other stores, or at the Baptist Bookstore, choose from the largest selection of Bibles in the Arklatex. Largest selection in the Arklatex. From study Bibles, study Bibles large, print, large print, children, children teen, teen, and devotional, and Bibles. devotional Bibles, we have them all. Have them all. Plus, free engraving on every Bible purchased at the Baptist Bookstore. We have the answers you're looking for. The road to financial freedom is waiting for you at Millway Federal Credit Union. It's obvious why so many residents of Bowie, Little River, and Miller counties are making Millway their financial institution. Millway strives to offer services at lower cost with attractive rates to ensure you, the member, earn more and save more every day. Reconnect with your money and feel good again. At Millway, it's your way. Locations in Ashdown and Texarkana, Arkansas, and Texarkana, Texas. Membership available to all residents of Bowie, Little River, and Miller County. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing lender. Welcome back. Our first guest this week is Cindy Elkins with the Texarkana Baptist Bookstore. And you know, last week and the week before, we've kind of been uh, touching things about things, school coming up. It's right around the corner. And uh, not only public schools, but we have the homeschooling, and that's what she's here to talk about, the homeschool record keeping. Welcome back to the program. Thank you so much, Sally. Now, you were on just a few weeks ago, and it's always good to have you back. Well, thank you. We had our wonderful Christmas in July sale. How I did that go? I came in and looked around. Thank you very much. You're and very it was very well attended. We had a great time. And, and everyone I followed came the shop. little feet. Did you follow I the? I did. I did. <laughs> I told that girl she didn't have to help me because I said, I know to follow these little feet. And that's what I did. <laughs> Thank you so much. And to all the viewers who came in, I want to say thank you to them as well. well we had a lady who called and said, you're having a sale over there? And I said, yes, ma'am. Come by and see us. Well, great. great. But today I'm here to talk about our homeschool record keeping seminar. Sally, this is our 13th year. Mm. That just doesn't seem possible. No, I remember the first year we did it and thought, mm, that'd probably be the only time. <laughs> but then people came back and said, are you going to have that seminar again? Uh -huh. And it has blossomed into a three-hour seminar. Well, and it's held at the convention center now, isn't it? No, this, this one is held at the Baptist Bookstore. Okay, because y'all have expanded. Yes. So you have room. We have okay. room in our yeah. conference room okay. to have this homeschool record keeping okay. seminar. We have a lot of people who come in and they just don't know what to do. They don't know where to go for answers. And I sit down with them and we talk about the specific child Mm -hmm. and what that child's needs are. But the homeschool record keeping seminar is how do you keep records? What classes should your child take if he or she is going into college? I had a mother tell me the other day, she said, my son is a welder and I doubt he goes to college. I said, well, there may be a college even for welders. He may need a business degree. Does he want to be a welder or does he want to be a master welder? That's right. So I'm there to try to walk them through and if they, the child wants to go to college, what are the different avenues he or she may face? Or what are the options? 
What classes do you need to take? How many classes of English, math, science? What are the math classes? What are the science classes? Do you need to take speech? Do I need two years of foreign language? What are the different foreign languages that I can take? What paperwork do I need for Texas A&M? What paperwork do I need for Texarkana College? I have all that for you. And you I, go from the very beginning, from kindergarten, I guess, through the 12th grade, right? We do. Okay. We have everything for sale at the bookstore. And Sally, that is a one day, one day, 20% off all Alpha and Omega, 25% off Saxon Math, and 50% off a great selection of Bob Jones. I had a ca lady that came in yesterday and she said, well, can, can I come back and get this on Wednesday at 20%? And I said, no, ma'am but you can come in on Thursday. We have an agreement with the Alpha and Omega company uh -huh. that we can offer 20% off that one day to our customers. Okay, all right, talking about, y'all excuse me, I have a mint in my mouth. I may start coughing, I don't wanna do that. Um, who can be a homeschool teacher? Can anybody now, or do you have to have a teaching degree? If, if I decided to say to homeschool grandkids or something, could I do it? Yes, you could. Even me? Even you. Dr. Brian Ray, even you, you're a smart lady. <laughs> Dr. Brian Ray did studies. Mm -hmm. If you are a public school student, the high school or college level education of the parent plays a significant part in the public school student's life. Mm -hmm. But in the homeschool student's life, it does not because you're working one on one. Mm -hmm. Think of the times in your life when someone has explained something to you one on one. Mm -hmm what a difference it, it makes made, a big difference compared to a class of 30 or 40 okay. or 60. So if anybody decided they wanted to homeschool their kids and I know a lot of them that well I'm going to homeschool this year and then they'll mm -hmm. send them to public school a year and then they'll yes. homeschool them again and I guess that's done quite a bit but any stay-at-home mom I don't guess you'd have to be a stay-at-home mom you just do it in the evenings. It can be a stay-at-home mom it can be a stay-at-home dad yeah. it can be a dad who is a trucker. I had a young lady and a dad that came in and he said, I'm a single dad, I'm a trucker. And she had her switched on schoolhouse work on her laptop and she did it going down the road. And they went to wonderful, beautiful places around the country. And she did all kinds of book reports. Oh and yeah. Reports on locations that they education. had been to. Uh -huh. And it was a wonderful experience sure was, for her. Sure I've been contacted because some parents feel and they know that their children are being bullied or a child is being bullied. And because of the seriousness of that now, and I know a young lady who committed suicide a couple years ago because of bullying. If you have any difference, if you're different at all. Mm -hmm. And some children, you know what, Sally? We're grown adults. If we're in a situation where we're frightened, we're scared, mm -hmm. we feel assaulted, we can get in our cars and go. But little kids can't do no, that. No, they can't. They can't. Well, but if you work in an environment where you've got somebody that is, I mean, you've got to stay at your job. And it happens mm -hmm. with adults too. Of course, I guess we handle it better. We handle it better yeah. and, and we make choices, but we have right. that option, but Correct. we sometimes, yeah. and I'm not saying that in public school that that's in every situation. Mm -hmm. And I definitely, definitely never say that public school is bad or that that's not an option. For some parents, when they sit down with me, we decide that public school may be best, yeah. your best option. Mm -hmm. This may be the best option for your child. I think the school is going to work with you. It, your child is going to have more success in public school. So just because you come in doesn't mean that, okay, she's only gonna talk to you about homeschooling. Right. We're gonna look at everything. Well, we even just, have contacts for people that can help and tutor if you need a tutor. Hmm. We find tutors and I can introduce you to some of them. So we just have information. But then if you decide that you want to homeschool and that it is the best avenue for you and your child, it's the best fit, okay. then we have the curriculum that you need to be successful. And you offer this record keeping seminar to yes. teach you how and to And it is vast and it is a lot of information. It t we talk <laughs> about grade point averages. How do you compute a grade point average? If you went out to, because I contact Texas A&M and mm -hmm. Texarkana College, and I ask them, what paperwork do you need? Mm -hmm. What specifically do you need? They share that information with you and I give it to you so as you're planning your child's education, you already have that information. Mm -hmm. It's at your fingertips. Right. And if you will come that one day, that August 11th, Sally, I have two huge tables full of freebies. Okay, That's what day is August 11th? Thursday. Thursday, August 11th, mm -hmm. at what time does it start? 9 a.m. 
Okay, at the Baptist Bookstore. And you must be present to win. All the prizes will give away $300 worth of Alpha and Omega Switched on Schoolhouse. We have a lot of other curriculums, and I collect. I have three tables right now of catalogs that will be bagged up for each person who attends. Okay. What is the uh, average annual cost of homeschooling? About what you would pay for the beginning of the school year. You can pick up the Alpha and Omega curriculum for a full year for $300. Hmm. And parents come in all the time. I have $100. Can I get anything? Can I, we get started? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am, you can. Okay, we so get the teacher keys them. and then you start buying the life packs, which are the little booklets that you need. Mm -hmm. And you can come in each month. And Sally, if you wanted to do that anywhere else, you would have to go up on the East Coast because not everybody has a warehouse like we do mm -hmm. to house all the Alpha and Omega. So you can come in the Baptist bookstore and buy a little at a time. Do you see homeschooling becoming more common? Yes. Okay. I do. A great deal. Well, with things every year we say that. <coughs> Someone asks me that every year. Are you seeing more people? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm seeing people stick with it longer. Okay. There are some that will leave homeschooling and go into public school, but even now we have two homeschool groups here in town. I know. Yeah. It's in Texarkana? Yes, ma'am. In Texarkana, we have two homeschool okay. groups. Well, how much time do you have to spend on a daily basis? Depending on the age of the child, mm -hmm. usually from 8 30, 9 o'clock to 12, 1, 2 o'clock. As they get older, there may be more involved science experiments, such as the. That's where the tutor would come in. That's <laughs> <laughs> but you have times like that or book yeah. reports. And, uh -huh. But remember, you don't have to change classes. You don't have to take role. You don't have to go out necessarily and try to get everybody back in and mm -hmm. take that time. There's a lot less time in that dead time. Right. Because it's really learning. If your child is quiet and is really getting into that history lesson, you don't have to interrupt the child That's right. to switch classes. Your child can work on history for an hour, so your child may be ahead in history. That's right. And I've That's been right. reading some articles about math and what we need to teach our children in math. Mm -hmm. And even our son, in the standardized test that he's had to take, mm -hmm. even some lately, he said, it's all, Mama, that math, Saxon Math 8-7 you made me take. Is that Saxon <laughs> Math 8-7? <eight> <laughs> now, was he homeschooled? Yes, ma'am. Okay, but you weren't home with him. Yes, ma'am. From the 6th through the 12th grades. Yes, ma'am. Oh, how old is he? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I'm only 29, you know. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so he graduated real young. No, I thought, okay. No, we homeschooled him from the 6th through the okay, 12th grade. Okay, because I thought you'd been working at the Baptist Bookstore forever. Ever since you were two. Every, so. Of course, because I'm only 29. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Well, I didn't realize that. Yes, ma'am, we did. Uh, and so it was a joy. So somebody goes to the homeschooling uh, program, they can be accepted into any college. You they follow the guidelines okay. that the college has, and that's mm -hmm. what I tell parents. Follow the guidelines, go online, look at what they have for homeschool students. And that's where I come in in the Texarkana area in helping you see those guidelines. But yes, they look at your ACT scores, your SAT scores. What do those SAT and ACT scores need to be mm -hmm. in order to be accepted? What classes do you need to take? Because Texas A&M has a form that they want you to use to check off what classes your child has had. Mm -hmm. I provide that form for you so you can look at it. Mm -hmm. And the homeschool groups will be there. They'll have representatives so you can meet them and see everyone. But the big deal is the prizes. We have so many prizes that we give away that day. I collect things all year long. Would I want to come for the prizes? <laughs> for the prizes. <laughs> <laughs> From 9 to 12, you might want to come for the prizes. Because I have Bibles, journaling Bibles, coloring books, kids coloring books, kids art books, kids curriculum, Alpha and Omega, Master Leaf Press. You name it, I have giveaways constantly that morning. Okay, is there a cost involved no, in this seminar? No, ma'am. Okay, just come, and it's at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock, August 11th. Thursday. Thursday, August 11th. And it's over at? 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. okay. And you do not need to sign up. You can just come. You don't just have to show call. up. Just show up. Now, it is not a seminar for children. Okay. It's not a seminar so where you want to bring, bring your, your kids. No, okay. it's not a second graders coming to the center. it's free of charge. It is free of charge, but okay. it is for the adults because the kids, it can be a little long for them. It's I'm an intensive sure. yeah. three hours of information. Okay. 
And you are always there to answer any questions throughout the school year yes, that someone may have. Yes, ma'am. And all the curriculum can be purchased through you at the Baptist Bookstore. Yes, ma'am. And I've had parents call and say, I don't know how to grade this. How do I grade this? I, I, I'm not sure what to do. And I will walk you through the grading. It's whatever you need for the homeschooling. Okay. I'm your, just call and ask for the homeschool lady. Now, are you the only one in Texture Canada that does this? As far as I know, there's okay. Judy, you know Judy Jarrett, she's at the bookstore. Yeah. She can answer some of your questions and we have a young lady on Saturdays by the name of Angelina okay. that can help you with homeschool questions. She's a homeschool mom. Okay. And we're all here to help you, but all I just right. love it. I love homeschooling. Well, it, it seems to me like it's getting more and more interesting as the days go by, especially with the public schools. And, and you know, I love public schools too. All my kids have been mm -hmm. through public schools, but sometimes a better option is the homeschooling. And we do want to tell all those teachers that we appreciate all the things oh, you good. do. I couldn't do yes. it. And uh -huh. I appreciate what they do and the hard work and the time and the Absolutely. money and the effort. And they're giving it their all, 100%. And we're not it's saying- It's a special calling. It's a special calling. And we're not saying that, oh, you need to take them out today. Mm -hmm. We're saying that this is an option. That's right. It's just another option. That's right. So, Well, Cindy, thank you so much. And again, if you're interested in homeschooling your children, that's a Thursday, August the 11th at 9 a.m. till noon at the Texture Cannon Bookstore on State Line. Right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thanks, Cindy. Thank you. We'll be right back after we hear from one of our sponsors. Hi there. I'm Larry Sims. It's been my privilege for the past several years to be a volunteer board member of Hospice of Texarkana. And there I'm able to represent community members like you. We continually customize our end of life care to better meet the needs of our community. As an example, our medical director and nurse practitioner still make visits to homes and facilities. Call today to learn more about the help we can give your family. Hospice of Texarkana, the nonprofit hospice established in 1985 for the community by the community. Join Domino Federal Credit Union today. If you live, work, worship, or attend school in Bowie, Cass, Marion, or Miller counties, you can become a member of Domino Federal Credit Union. Need a low cost loan? Personal, auto, motorcycle, boat, RV, vacation, real estate. We take care of all your loan needs. Make your life easier. Join Domino Federal Credit Union today. Federally insured by NCUA, equal housing lender. At Dirksen Memorial Hospice, we focus on the care of our patients, not the cure. We dedicate ourselves to this service because our family has been there. So think of it like our family helping your family with 24 hour, seven day a week access to quality care and emotional support for loved ones. Dirksen Memorial Hospice, it's hospice with a heart. Our next guest I would like to introduce to you is Mr. Terry McNutt and he is the past president of the Elks Lodge of Texarkana and uh, we're going to learn a little bit about what the Elks Lodge is. You may know I don't so I'm going to find out but they are getting ready to have the main thing he's going to talk about is a golf tournament that they're going to have and they it will benefit uh, special needs children and they have a camp and we're going to hear all about that so I'm going to shut up and let you talk. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay now you're on the Texas side the Elks Lodge. Right. And what is Elks Lodge? It is a nonprofit organization that uh, we try to provide scholarships for children we support children, we support the police officers, we support veterans. Mm -hmm. uh, the Grand Lodge is out of Chicago, Illinois. Mm -hmm. uh, we have what they call Elks National Foundation. Mm -hmm. They're all through uh, 5113C, mm -hmm. nonprofit. Uh, and we provide scholarships for children to go to school, college. Okay. Uh, we provide prosthesis for children. Uh, there's just a lot. If People really want to know what all of Elks is. It'd take me two days to tell you. But they can go on elks.org, which is the Grand Lodge uh -huh. website, uh, and look up a lot of a lot of things that the Elks do. Okay. And well, I have never, all I know is uh, they have dances, don't you? 
uh, that we have a group called the Over 30s group that rents our big hall. Okay, and they have this. And okay. I think when they said over 30s, I think they talked about their grandchildren. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. I mean, they're 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 an elderly bunch of people, and they come in and dance and have a good time. Okay. Yes, on okay. Friday night. Uh, and so, how long has the Elks Lodge been in existence? When oh was it founded? Oh my goodness. Uh, trying to think what we celebrated not long ago. And I wonder why it's called the Elks Lodge. Do you know that? How it, it used to be called, the, it started out as a Jolly Cork back, uh, gosh, back in 1800. Huh, Jolly Cork. Yeah, up in and around New York, which is where the first uh -huh. started. Uh, we've had presidents, uh, actors, all kinds of people who belong to the Elks Lodge. Hmm. How interesting. I had no idea about yeah. that, about the back. And how long have you been in Texarkana? Uh, this lodge here actually started out with the, on the Arkansas side, they were downtown. Uh -huh. It was uh, Texarkana, uh, Texarkana Elks 399. Uh -huh. And then they moved over by, I think Garland Avenue. I think that's their address. Uh, they're still there and then there was, I guess you call it a split. Uh -huh. uh, they wanted, wanted one in Texas. Uh -huh. And so that's how Texarkana uh, 2771 started. Okay. And our what we have in Texas is the children's camp that we sponsor. Uh, all of Texas lodges do. Okay, and where is it located? It's located in Gonzales, Texas, called Octene. Okay, and that is where the monies from this golf tournament right. is going to go down to this camp. Right. And who is this camp for? It is for special needs children. Uh, again, you can go on texas.org or texaselks.org mm -hmm. and go to TECI, click on it, and there's a video showing what all those kids go through in the camp that they have. It's, okay. Boy, if it don't bring a tear to your eye, nothing will. Oh, and it's great for the kids, but it's also great for the the right. caretakers. Yeah, the, the family or the caretakers, mm -hmm. uh, they get a respite mm -hmm. from it mm -hmm. uh, for about a week and uh, kind of recharge their batteries. Mm -hmm. Okay, you were talking about uh, all the other things you do to, to help kids and where does, when you're not having a golf tournament, where does the money come from? You mentioned something about y'all have meals on Friday night. Does uh, the money yeah. from that go to? Well, most of that goes, we don't charge enough really to make it, get any okay. money for that. Yeah. Uh, it pays for the food that we've had to buy. Uh -huh. uh, we only make a small profit on it uh -huh. to help keep the, the lodge going. Right. You know, uh -huh. electricity, water, and all that. Uh -huh. uh, but we have fundraisers all during the year. Uh, we're going to be having a uh, garage sale. Uh, we have a, uh, we're in with the Texas Canada Dart Association, and they put on a benefit to help the lodge also. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a dark tournament, we have a silent auction, and we bring in money that way. So there's something going on all the time. Hmm. Well that's it. How can someone become a member of the Elks Lodge? Uh, if they really want to be a member, just come out to the lodge, like on a Friday night, have them a nice meal, meet the members that are there, mm -hmm. and the member will be the one have? propose you. Okay, so you have to be Right, a member somebody. proposes you. Okay. And then it goes through the process of being read on the floor and put in a newsletter and all that silly stuff. How many members do you currently have? Oh, I think it's a, right now 100 and, I'm gonna say 132. Okay. Uh, at one time we were quite a bit higher, but uh, we've, we've lost some. Uh, some have passed away, mm -hmm. some have moved, and some just quit coming. Yeah. Do you have like an annual dues or? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, it's ours is eighty nine fifty or eighty nine dollars a year, uh, and then there's a ten dollar donation if you'd like to make for Elks National Foundation, which helps provide the scholarships and all the other okay. stuff I mentioned previously. Okay. All right. Well, let's get into uh, the golf tournament. Tell us when and where it's going to be. Okay. Uh, I do want to mention one thing now. Okay. If somebody wants to be a member. Y'all might like this one, well, you, I know you will. One of the questions asked when they make application, and if they answer no, then they're not gonna get in. And that is, do you believe in God? Good question. So that's is, if they say no, then they're not gonna be able to be installed, be initiated into the- So you are a Christian? We are a Christian organization. Yes, ma'am. Okay, well that's Very good much to know. so. Good to know. That's great. That's what keeps you going so strong. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> sure it is. 
uh, the golf tournament. It's going to be at New Haven Golf Course. Uh, they have been really great to us this year. We've been having them out at the golf ranch, mm -hmm. but he had another group got the dates that we wanted. So uh, we went to New Haven, and they have been outstanding to oh, us. Oh, they're a great group of people. Yeah. They really are. Uh, Wayne has just been over backwards. Mm -hmm. They've, uh, other than us having a car that someone can win for a hole-in-one, He's donated a golf cart for a whole. Oh one. wow! So they're they're really. He get, must like the Elks. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, I, if I could get him to come out there, that'd be great. <laughs> that would be. Yeah. So. Uh, well, what's but the it's date? a two-man scramble. Two two-man scramble. Right. Okay. And it costs uh, seventy-five dollars per player. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get your own get your own par uh, partner. Okay. And this year we're going to have some dignitaries from the state of state Elks Association, which. The new president of the Texas Elks Association will be here. Great. Uh, last year we had the first female president. She was here. Okay. Uh, right. And so this isn't your first year to do the golf. Oh tournament. no, this is. We have at this time of year is called the inner lodge meeting. That's when uh, seven other lodges, their members, come to our lodge, uh -huh. and we put on. We have a program. Uh, it's called an inner lodge meeting. We go through different things as far as the lodges are concerned. And then we have a big meal and we have uh, just a lot of activities going on. The sweethearts of the lodge, which is the ones that actually bring in money for the children's camp. Okay. Uh, Texas is the only one that does this. Okay. And uh, so our sweetheart, we, I'll, I'll give her every penny that comes in on this golf tournament. So what is the date and the time? It's going to be January the 20th at 9 a.m. in the morning. Okay, it's a ways off. Huh? A ways off. Oh, it's not just a couple of weeks. J you said January. Oh, excuse me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, have one, I may have one January too. That's you never fine. know. That's fine. <laughs> no, it's going to be August the 20th. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, oh, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> I better read my own flyer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, August, August the 20th. August the 20th. Right. And what day is that on? It's on a Saturday. Saturday, August the 20th. Right. And uh, if they want to have breakfast before the tournament, mm -hmm. stop at the Elks Lodge. They get a free breakfast. Okay, but you uh, got to stop at the Elks Lodge. You don't have yeah. it out at the golf course. No, we're going to have it at the, at the okay. Elks what Lodge. Okay, what time is the tee And the off? reason it being is that's the third Saturday of the month, and mm -hmm. we have a free breakfast for veterans every third okay. Saturday. Okay. So we're going to have it there. All right. They can eat with the veterans. And we have lunch out at the golf course. Okay. Uh, one of our members is going to be cooking hamburgers and hot dogs. All right. Out there. They used to have some of those steaks and fish you were talking about. No, that's <laughs> Friday night. You'll love those. Okay. All right. Now, what time is the tee off? It's going to tee off at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. Uh, okay. Shotgun so that'll starts. give you time to go to the Elks Lodge and yeah. eat breakfast and then come on out. And it's a two man scramble or woman, two person scramble. Two person. Okay, seventy-five dollars a person. Right. And uh, a lot of prizes. Yeah, oh yes, we got uh, longest drive closest to the pin, uh, and of course a hole in one. You get a brand new car if you want to take the chance. It's a ten dollar chance. Okay. Uh, and that's provided by uh, uh, Pete Mankins. Okay. And uh, then you also have, like I said, stated a while ago, a chance to win a golf cart. All right. Uh, for a hole in one, and he's providing closest to the pin and a long drive contest too, which we're going to give hundred dollar gift certificates to uh, Academy. Okay, great, great. Well, now how do you sign up? Just give me a call uh, at 903-277-9456. Uh, my email, they can email me and I can send them a flyer and it's got the registration on the flyer at TMAC, that's T-T-M-A-C-228, at AOL.com. Okay. Now, can you sign up the day of, show up and sign up, or do you well, have to we need to, You can. Uh -huh. uh, we like to try to have an idea of how many people are going to be in it. Sure. And, of course, Wayne, they're going to put the names of the players on the carts. So uh -huh. the sooner you can get signed up, the better. Okay. And we may run out of spaces, so I All wouldn't right. wait. So you need to hurry up and sign up for this or golf Or they can come tournament. by the Elks Lodge and get the application. Okay. So a great benefit. And thank you so much for this information. I'm glad to learn about well, the Elks you. Lodge. Okay. Good to have you and good luck with the golf tournament. Thank you. Again, that's Thursday, August the 20th at New Haven Golf Course. Sign up for this golf tournament. It's, it's a great benefit for this camp down in Texas for special needs children. Thanks again.
We'll be back after we hear from one of our sponsors. Don't go away. I have three boys and I know what it is to have unexpected expenses and unforeseen costly projects eat up your monthly budget. Over the years, our staff at Millway has found interesting ways to cut costs while raising a family and still have fun. Here are a few of our staff members' tips. Use coupons. Carefully planning can cut your grocery bill in half. Compare and choose cell phone plans carefully. Include family members in creating meals at home which provides quality family time and saves money. Teach children that the most expensive is not always the best. Join a school carpool. Keep a vehicle after it's paid for and continue to pay the payments to your savings account. Then you'll have a down payment for a new one in years to come. I'm Alan Brown with Millway Federal Credit Union. I hope these tips help you. Be it in person, at home, or on the go, Millway is always. It's time to be a witness. Share your faith. He came. He died. He arose. He ascended. He's coming back. Proclaim you are a believer. Find your voice at the Baptist Bookstore, 4605 North State Line Avenue. Our next two segments are going to, uh, we're going to be visiting with some of our homeless shelters here in Texarkana, Randy Sams and the Texarkana Friendship Center. And we're going to be talking about what's going on at this time and some needs they have. And um, I think some, some special things that have been going on for the, I guess the Te city of Texarkana, Texas has awarded a, a big amount of money. And so we're going to find out how we're going to spend that. And um, anyway, Without further ado, let's get started with Miss Jennifer Laurent from the uh, Randy Sam Shelter. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Now, are we Laurent, Laurent, or did I say it right? I'll answer to anything. Uh, okay. My, my husband's family says Laurent, and so I tend to go with that. Okay, but it's E and T. It is E and T. Okay, it's they don't. Lauren with a T at the end. Okay, but they don't know their. Their alpha, I mean, their well, if it sounds. were said correctly, we'd drop the T entirely. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> so you'll answer it. Yeah, I, whatever it is, I'll answer. Okay. Now, I know a few weeks ago that y'all were in a need of water. We were. We were. But and you we, got plenty of water. We asked for water <laughs> and the community responded. Great. Uh, at last count, we had just over 80,000 bottles. Um, so we're, we're prepared with water for a while and we are very thankful that the community was so giving. They, they responded in such an enormous way. We were literally getting truckloads of water. That's tremendous. Uh, it, it has been just such, such a blessing to be a part of it. So awesome to see you know, something simple like water that we don't always think about being a luxury mm -hmm. uh, was we were going through and we were, we were seeing as many as 30 and 40 cases a day going out, sure. being consumed. And so we, we said, you know, we'd really like some water if you're out and about and they listened. That's great. Well, now you need to think of something else. Well, I, I uh, T-bone steaks maybe exactly. <laughs> now we're just going to say that we're we're so so thankful for the community and and the support they give the shelter and the population we serve and it's it's been so wonderful to be able to have the water to distribute and and to really make sure that people are getting what they need in this heat. Well, I'm sure that the uh, the residents have picked up as far with the heat and everything. They they have. We we always see a few more that come in in the in the severe heat. And, mm -hmm. Uh, we are currently not air conditioned, so it's really something to come in. I didn't in. know you weren't air conditioned. We're, we are not right now, but we're, we are air conditioning this year. 
Okay, but you have not been? No. We so twenty you just years, used fans? Uh, we've just used fans. We've been open for 20 years and never had air conditioning. And we are finally in the position that we can put the air conditioning in and renovate the building to be able to accommodate that. Um, right now, the shelter is not built to where, even if we put in air conditioning units prior to now, it wouldn't have worked. It, it wouldn't have worked. It's a gymnasium type building. Uh -huh. We would have been trying to literally air condition the outside. Mm -hmm. um, but we are working with contractors and subcontractors and a whole slew of people, and we are air conditioning and renovating and expanding. Wow, so how much are you gonna expand? We will be able to get up to 115 people. And what uh, are you at now? We're at 93 at squeezed in right okay. now. So we're, but we're gonna double the size of our women's shelter. Okay. Um, we're very pleased about that. Currently we can, we should house 15, we do house 18, and we're gonna get up to 36 with the expansion for our women's area. Okay, do you have to turn a lot of women away? We do, and that's where we- Where do we, they go? <sighs> We don't always know. Sometimes they can get a hotel room through a giving citizen or, mm -hmm. or organization. Some can go to Salvation Army. Some can get into domestic violence prevention. Some we work to get back in with their families and some are unfortunately on the streets. And so that's, mm -hmm. we got a bequest to start this process and our board said that this was the time we, we were able to do this. And so we've been working on a capital campaign and. We, we've made considerable progress in that campaign and we are starting renovations. Well, that's tremendous. Now, I guess, back you said 20 years ago, mm -hmm. I guess it was mostly men that were on the streets well, homeless. Well, when Randy Sam's opened, we actually were in a much smaller facility mm -hmm. located on the Arkansas side rather than Texas. Um, and we did house men, women, and children. Um, and then they, they switched buildings to our current location. Mm -hmm. And they did at that point allow children um, but the biggest part of the need that we were seeing at Randy Sam's at that point were homeless men. Okay. And while that is still the majority of those that come in our door, we do know that there are more women that are seeking shelter and are not able to get it. So we're going to work to accommodate that need as well. Okay. How is the bakery coming along? The bakery is great. Um, we're moving them to their own space. They've done so well that they need more room. Well, has it been air conditioned? No, no. We're all working with no air conditioning. <laughs> Um, and so they're, they're going to their own space in the next few days, and we're very pleased about that so that they'll be able to bake and produce even more. Uh, they're, they're starting, a, they have a fundraiser that's going on, and the bakery team has gotten invited to go to a baking conference in Las Vegas. Wow, that's... To, <laughs> to learn about not only baking really uh -huh. great items, but also how to run a bakery. Okay. And so it's another skill set that they can, they can do, and we're very pleased for them. Um, we've just been amazed at how well it's worked. Uh, and, and a and lot of people are wanting to be a part of it. They are, they are. And it's, you know, we've, we've been able to really see a change in the people that have, have become employed by the bakery. We've had to hire more bakers. Uh, we started with two, mm -hmm. we're up to six, mm. and they are working all of the time to meet the, meet the demand for orders. All right. Well, what can we as a community do to help in this expansion that's going to be going on? You I need think money donations? Or? Money donations are, are really important in the expansion. I mean, it's we have to pay the contractors and, and all of the supplies that come in for that. Have you already hired a contractor? We are, we are in the process of that. We have issued the bid for the AC um, and some subcontractors for making the building work with the AC. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we will, we did break it down into phases. So we're in phase one now, phase two will start very shortly and we're working on contractors for that. And then phase three will follow that. Okay, but well, that will be the air conditioning, the phase three? Phase one is the air conditioning. Oh, okay. We are, right. uh, we, we wanna make sure to get the people as cool as we can mm -hmm. um, because once they're cooler and more comfortable, it will be easier to deal with the renovations That's right. that will take place after because That's we, right. Unlike lots of other places, we, we have to, we have people sleeping in our, where we're gonna renovate. There is nowhere else for them to mm -hmm, be. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're asking our contractors and our, our subcontractors to really bear with us while we work this out. And we've been preparing our residents for the changes that are gonna happen and all of the, the extra coming and going in an already kind of chaotic situation. Now, when the heat rises like this, do the, do the tempers rise also? They do. You see a lot more. They do. It's, it's difficult to control your temper um, when you're already hot uh -huh. and miserable and you're surrounded by 80 plus strangers 
So we, we do and know they're all that. hot and miserable. Yeah, they're hot and miserable <laughs> as well. Um, and so we, we do know that each summer we see tempers tend to flare more mm -hmm. easily. We spend a lot of time trying to keep everybody calm mm -hmm. and cool and collected. Um, and as well, tempers going up, we also see a rise in medical problems. You know, when, mm -hmm. when you're hot, and there are many that have heat aggravated illnesses mm -hmm. or things that might be tolerable if you were a cool temperature, mm -hmm. but are certainly not when it's much warmer than it's natural to want to be. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we spend a lot of time trying to work through that as well. And we think with adding air conditioning, we're gonna help several problems all at once. Um, keep people from becoming more ill, keep people from becoming heated in their tempers. Solve and, a lot of problems. And we know that they'll sleep better. Mm -hmm. If it's cooler, they can sleep better. If they can sleep better, then they can go out in the day and maybe make a little more progress in their journey right. to, to get back into self-sustained community living. Right. Okay. Well, anything else specific to Randy Sams you'd like to talk about before Brian joins us? I just, I think that we at Randy Sams, we're excited that, that we have partners like Brian, that, that we have partners like the city. We've worked with so many really great organizations in town and we know that lives are being changed because of those partnerships and because of the community we're in. You know, we're, we're different than a lot of communities and Texarkana makes it possible for all of us to do what we do and, and help those that at this moment can't help themselves. Okay, we appreciate all that you do. Thank you. So. Okay, well, we're going to go to a break, and when we return, uh, Brian Bixler will join us on the love seat. So, stick with us. We'll be right back. It's time to be a witness. Share your faith. Proclaim you are a believer. Find your voice at the Baptist Bookstore, 4605 North State Line Avenue. Join Domino Federal Credit Union today. If you live, work, worship, or attend school in Bowie, Cass, Marion, or Miller counties, you can become a member of Domino Federal Credit Union. Need a low cost loan? Personal, auto, motorcycle, boat, RV, vacation, real estate. We take care of all your loan needs. Make your life easier. Join Domino Federal Credit Union today. Federally insured by NCUA, equal housing lender. As promised, the Executive Director of the Texas County Friendship Center, Brian Bixler, has joined us on the love seat. He made fun of me for that. We say the love seat. <laughs> you know, uh, anyway, I know I can't sing. Uh, and they are going to tell us about a grant that they received. We're very excited about it. Okay, Brian, would you like to start? Sure. Okay. Well, I mean, I think Jennifer and I uh, are located closely together uh, at work, and we work with a lot of the same people, and so it would be natural for us to work together. And mm -hmm. uh, so we're excited. Uh, the city of Texarkana has sub submitted a grant application on, on our behalf, and uh, East Texas uh, Veterans Resource Center, and uh, we received a grant for about six hundred thousand dollars, which is a lot of money. And it's going to do a lot of good. Okay. So, where did this grant come from? Jennifer, you can tell specifics because you're more <laughs> familiar with the technical details. Uh, it's the Emergency Solutions Grant. It's administered through TDHCA, which is the Texas Department of Housing and Community Affairs. Mm -hmm. um, that money came from HUD to TDHCA and then they dole it out. Um, we compete among most of the state of Texas 
and were one of the few that were awarded full funding that we asked for and we, we did ask for maximum amount. Mm -hmm. And so it will come from HUD to TDHCA and then TDHCA to the City of Texarkana, Texas and then City of Texarkana, Texas down to those of us who are administering services. Okay. Now did you have to submit a grant request for this? Who wrote that? We did in collaboration with the City of Texarkana, Texas. Okay. They have a grant writer, Adra, Adra Halford, who's fabulous, and she does most of the combining and the moving and the heavy lifting of that, and mm -hmm. we submit our information to her. Okay, so were you surprised when you received the full amount? Uh, we were very happy for sure. I know. And I think for us, you know, we're members of the Texarkana Homeless Coalition, and so what we've been aware of for a long time is there are no islands, and so it's not Friendship Center versus Randy Sams or, or any other provider mm -hmm. in town, you know, that we want the big picture and that is that we know that homelessness is an issue, we know that people are hurting, people are without, and so we want to do everything that we can to look at the big picture, to take the strengths that our organizations have, and there's a lot of other people that we work with that mm -hmm. aren't necessarily named in the grant, but help us along the way with referrals, with services, um, and, and so for us just as a community to come together and say we're going to do everything we can to attack this problem not just from one direction but lots of directions mm -hmm. to those that are homeless to get them uh, not to be homeless anymore, those that are at risk of becoming homeless that we can have a safety net and keep them from being there long. Um, so we're just excited about what the future is going to hold and, and about lives being improved uh, because of this funding. Okay. So it's to the Randy Sams, the uh, Tesher County Friendship Center and one other? Uh -huh. East Texas Veterans Resource Center. Okay. And now what is that? Well, it's, I guess it's resources for veterans. Mm -hmm. They they specialize. They are a a smaller offshoot of Community Health Corps, but their specialty is in assisting homeless veterans and getting back into housing and remaining in housing. They have people that work with the Heroes Pantry. They work mm -hmm. with making sure that those who come into the shelter or the Friendship Center who are veterans can get access to the services that are available only to veterans. Mm -hmm. And so they have boots on the ground um, in Texarkana and they work out of Longview and several other surrounding counties um, so we're able to reach out past the city limits of Texarkana. Okay. Are we uh, seeing more homeless veterans? Is it becoming more prominent or? It's continued I mean and I think the thing with them coming in we've worked with them for a long time Randy Sams in particular mm -hmm. and so but it's usually just been more in a referral you know if we come in c contact with a veteran then we'll call them. They've got funding, they've got specific skill sets that they can help them with. So it's exciting for us to not just kind of be as an aside working together, but much more uh, just every day uh, for, for us to be stronger because we work with them and, and them us. Okay. Right, Brian, tell us the difference between what Randy Sams does and what the Friendship Center does. What okay. are the main differences? Well, so, so uh, Randy Sams is actually a shelter, so okay. you're going to find people sleeping under their roof mm -hmm. there, as you talked about earlier. For Friendship Center, we don't have anybody staying at our building. We do have a joint grant, Randy Sams and the Friendship Center does, called the Doorways Project, in which we are able to house people. So we're, they're, they're coming from Randy Sams, from Salvation Army, from the streets, and they're uh, being housed in their own apartments or uh, duplexes around town. So the Friendship Center is what we call supportive services. So we help with food, we help with groceries, we help, we've got a job training program, so people come into our center, but they don't stay there. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas Randy Sams, they actually are on site a lot of the time. But we do, again, there's some people that we work together with, there are others that only I see, and some that only she sees. Um, okay, and how long have you been the director? Uh, nine years. Nine years, mm -hmm. I remember when that, when that came to be. Yeah, time's passing. So, now, have you always worked so well together? Have, Y'all always worked in conjunction together, the Friendship Center. I think Randy since Sam's. Jennifer's been around, we certainly have done even more so. The, the previous director and I so worked together. So you're easy together. to get along with Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Oh, that been <laughs> called worse. <laughs> <laughs> we just know the need, really. Um, and yeah, so and what we're here for, or mm -hmm. what you're here for. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what can the community do to help the Friendship Center? What are you in need of at this time? Uh, not water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're sharing your water. Sure. We do. We do. <laughs> I think we just need engagement, we need involvement, you know, we certainly have need for funds, all of uh -huh. us do. Uh, we have need for volunteers, we have need for people to, to just 
come down and see what's going on and see how they can be a part. You know, everyone's got their strengths and weaknesses and, and we want to take those strengths. And again, I mean, thinking about these two grants that we run, it's important for us to have community resources to where we can have guest speakers or to where we can have people that can help with life skills training or, or that can be good landlords for us or, or whatever the case may be, just to be actively involved. It's not something where we're the hired guns and, and, and we do the work and, and people send the check. Well, I mean, we, we certainly take checks, but we need people to, to come and give of their time and to be actively involved. What are your plans for this money? Well, there's a lot of different directions. Um, one thing that we're really excited about is that there's going to be a building that's going to be used. It's where the uh, Bowie County Health Clinic, did I say that right? You did. Um, it's, it's over uh, on Spruce Street. Uh, just where is it from, going? Just across from Wadley. It's staying put. That's the cool thing is that it's a building that they're not using the whole building. And so part of this grant is renovating okay. that building and for us to all be together. So, so there's going to be some people that maybe would come for their services and they don't have enough gas to come just the, the half mile to Friendship Center or Randy mm -hmm. Sam's, or maybe they come after we've closed or whatever the case may be. And so for us to be in the same building to where we can, uh, again, we can grab people that maybe are facing homelessness that never would. So that's a, a big thing that's gonna be done. Also though, there, there is, uh, on Jennifer's side, there's, there's funding to help with emergency shelters, so those that are in shelters. There's, there's funding for housing prevention, so people that uh, are facing eviction, we can keep them from becoming evicted. There's funding for rapid rehousing, so those that are homeless, but maybe just barely, well then we can rapidly, quickly get them back into housing. So there's a lot of different fingers, but the bottom line is someone that, that is homeless or is soon to become homeless will have a much greater avenue to getting out of that, and, and we're just happy to, to be able to offer that to people. Okay. How does a doorway project work? Doorways Project is rapid rehousing, um, so Randy Sams and Friendship Center both administer that, again, under the umbrella of the City of Texarkana, Texas. We spend up to a year with them, helping them with rent, and more importantly than that, we've got life skills training, we've got a, ca a caseworker that sees them three times a month, uh, you know, one time in a meeting, one time at their office, and one time at their home, mm -hmm. to where, again, we're getting to know the whole person and we're helping them to understand how they became homeless, and what it's going to take to be self-sufficient at the end of the process. Okay. Any uh, new life skill opportunities that you're offering since well, you were on last time? Anything new? Uh, you know, again, CNA, and I'm glad you said that, we actually are taking applications right now. So if anyone wants to come for CNA training, we could do that through doorways, their life skills classes once a month. So we really are just looking, again, for community members that just want to come give a presentation on banking, on insurance, on uh, job life, you know, job skills, whatever the case may be that we can take what they know and we can get them into contact with people that maybe don't already know that or maybe they think that they can't, so. Um, okay, what else $600,000 besides the renovation of that building? Well, I think that it does, it pays a significant <coughs> amount toward providing emergency shelter. So it, it helps with Randy Sam's paying our utility bills. Okay. Our, our electric bill prior to air conditioning runs $750 a month. Our water bill is a little over 1100 these funds will help pay that, reducing what we're having to mm -hmm. pull from the community. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's important to remember that this is $600,000 that's coming into the community that will be spent in our community. Mm -hmm. It's coming in from somewhere else. I mean, and it's, it's here solely to assist. So not only are we helping those that really are in desperate need of the services, I, I think that we're boosting the community as a whole because mm -hmm. we're able to spend a considerable amount of money in our town mm -hmm. to, to make this work. And so, we're excited to be able to bring oh, in no. funds from somewhere else to pump on, pump into our own town. But people don't need to quit giving. Absolutely because. not. And I think what you're really, you've got this now, what you're in need of is volunteers and mm -hmm. people's time. I think that lots of people don't think that they have anything they can give and I, I think that every person has something that's valuable to contribute to what we do and the population that we serve. And if you come down and, and hang out and meet people, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that universally people want to feel heard and loved and everybody is capable of, of that. They can come and just spend some time being their friend. Mm -hmm. Just uh, say something positive, just, you know, just to be there to, or if somebody wants to talk, let them talk or, you know, it's always needed. Now, when will this money be received? When will it start 
working here at Texture Canada? September 1st is, uh, I mean, there's not, not like there's going to be a big check cashed or anything, but um, that's when the program starts. So we'll okay. begin incrementally uh, having funds available to us. So. Okay. Well, now, will any of that go towards what you're doing at Randy Sam's as far as the renovation there? Or you've already got monies for that? We, we do have some money for that, but $35,000 of the 600000 is designated for renovation in the shelter. Um, I, I think it's important, $600,000 seems like such an enormous sum of money. Well, it does. And it is an enormous sum of money, but I, I think it is important to remember that it doesn't take long to spend that kind of money, um, particularly when we're trying to get people into housing and keep them in housing. And we can, we can do a lot with this money, but it's, it's a one-year contract. Um, there's no guarantee that it will be renewed. Um, so you've got to spend it in a year? We have to spend it in a year. Okay got a, a busy year ahead of you. We do. We, we <laughs> like do. you say, it seems like a whole lot, but when you're spending it for these purposes, it'll go fast. So what's been going on at the uh, thrift store? Everything is good. Okay. Uh, staying, staying busy, lots of people coming through, so uh, we okay. appreciate it. What do you not take there at the Friendship Center? Oh, store? You're asking the wrong person there. <laughs> okay, you don't know. Uh, if it's a value, we try, we try to take it and get okay, it to Okay, appliances. Else. And, uh, if they if they work, yes, and that's okay. that's kind of the question. Is sometimes sometimes people aren't completely honest, so that burns us. But uh, yeah, anyway. well, you give them, and do y'all try it out before you give it to people? We do, we do. And you find out. I guess I just want to get rid of it, right? Yeah, that happens sometimes. It does. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, what about uh, volunteers for down there? You need. Oh, there's. Vol I think volunteers anywhere is, is good because that's the thing is once you be, once you actually start getting involved, you see what the needs are, mm -hmm. and, and, and you that's our best recruiting tool is other volunteers finding other volunteers. So yes, that's we will right. take volunteers always ever. Okay. Well, we just appreciate so much what y'all do for the community. I mean, I don't know what we would do without. How long has the Friendship Center been? Uh, I know Doc Shull started it. Yeah, we're over 40 years. 40 years. So. And what about Randy Sims? 20 years this year. All right, it was 20 years. Okay. So, and um, I'm sure you're just going to continue to expand. It's, it's a shame that it's got to be that way, but there's always the need. So, um, anything either one of you would like to add in closing? The needs are great, you know. I mean, uh, again, I think that we're not going to have to say no to as many people. I mean, there's our phones are off the hook. I mean, people are, are in continually, and, and so we kind of wring our hands, and, and we sometimes text back and forth and say, I can't believe we can't. And so, now and more often we can say, well, we can. We can. So. Okay. Real quick, uh, meals that you offer at the Friendship Center. Uh huh. Uh, Monday through Friday, uh, breakfast and lunch. Breakfast and lunch. Uh -huh. Okay. At Randy Sam's. For those that live at Randy Sam's, it's breakfast, lunch for those that can't leave, and dinner. Okay. Um, and on the first Friday or when the Friendship Center is closed, we take up feeding the public. Okay. Okay. So you do provide meals, mm -hmm. and I assume that the numbers were given so they're on the screen. Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, thank you both so much once again. We thank appreciate you. you. Glad to be here. That's all we have for this week's show. We appreciate you for watching, and I guess we'll see you right back here next time.